Yo, good morning. Good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks coming to you live and direct from our world headquarters here in Rochester, New York. We were on hiatus last week because uh, we were out of town. We were at the National Association of Realtors convention in sunny San Diego. So it's really great to see some of you out there in person in real life. I got to see people and high five them. And we did some reels and we did some dancing and we did some learning and we did some educating. So it really was a great week. And then we went to uh, Indianapolis, Indiana on Tuesday. Right? Today's Friday. Yeah. Tuesday to Wednesday. Came back Wednesday night. Worked yesterday. And we're back in the studio today. So thank you so much for tuning in. We got one person, Michael J. Williams. Going to add you to the broadcast right here. Shout out to Michael J. from Grand Rapids, Michigan. You guys are probably experiencing some lovely fall weather, a lot like we are here in The Rock. Uh, as you're tuning in, we have a bunch of people. Put it in the comments. This is a great way for you to network when you watch live streams. You put who you are, where you're from. If you specialize in a certain area, add that to the comments because you know what I'll do? I then add it to the screen. And you know what happens then? You are immortalized forever in this video on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Just saying, just saying, it's a great way for you to kind of network and, and get some exposure without ever having to be on camera. All right. Well, today, I didn't have any topics coming into it, but then I thought of some stuff uh, as I was running this morning. Hold on. It is excellent coffee. I saw my new coffee mug. It's pretty, pretty sweet. Oh, shout out to Tiffany. Balanoff from Long Island with Douglas Elliman. Shout out to you, Tracy Hawkins, the safety lady from Kansas Surrey, Kansas Surrey, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas Surrey, could that be like a like a shorter version? Uh, it was great to see you in person, Tracy, along with your twin sister at NAR. Uh, Yes, Michael J., that's right. We saw you in Traverse City last month for the Michigan Realtors Convention. We got Heather Frank from New Jersey. Yo, Heather, I'm going to see you at Triple Play maybe next month. Uh, we'll be in Atlantic City. We got three classes. We got social media ethics for uh, realtors. Then we have a broker's class, and then we have a class for AEs. So it's a great day for real estate with the brownie and the fruit. Oh, yeah, Michael. Yo, man, look it. Michael, here's another shout out for him. If you want to be remembered, this is this is another great tip. You go to a convention, you hear a speaker, you bring the speaker brownies and fruit or something to eat because sometimes we're going back to back to back to back to back and we got to make sure that our stuff's all set up and we don't really have time to eat. Now I got to tell you, this boy got to eat. You got to feed the machine. Um, and then sometimes if you want to give us cool coffee cups, I just, that's my, my new favorite. Ah, we got Jeffrey Scott Stanton from sunny New York City. No, from New York City, New York, New York. And then we got Brittany Matat from Canton. 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 All depends on how you pronunciate it or say it. But here's what I thought we'd talk about today. And again, feel free to put any questions, concerns, something you want to know about. There's been some really, um, Really great changes for the industry is what I'm going to say. Uh, that was voted on last week at NAR that are going to change how we do things in real estate. But now is a good time for you to be doing business planning. Now, I'm not going to do a business planning webinar today because I feel like you can get that uh, 10 different places in the next 60 days. What I'm going to do is give you ammunition. Hey, Carrie Rose. Ammunition to... Uh, Make your business plan because some of you are like, I don't need a business planning webinar. I know what to do. But sometimes you have to sit back and analyze the data. This is one of the things that's really hard for me. It was hard for me in the beginning. I don't love analyzing data. I don't love um, – I will recap the changes for you. Uh, I don't love the data all the time. I love the data if I can use it to enhance my marketing efforts to be more effective. Okay, what do I mean by that? So often when, when you're putting together a marketing strategy, social media strategy, video strategy, whatever it is, any kind of strategy, a strat plan, you're speculating, right? You're like, okay, this is what I think will work. If you don't go back 
and analyze that to see what worked and what didn't, then you're insane. Right with social media, I talk about it all the time. You got to go to your Facebook page, your YouTube channel, your Instagram, wherever you're actively uh, engaged, and then look at your insights. Your insights will tell you factually what your audience is is engaging with, and then you need to formulate a strategy from that. If you don't, don't talk to me next year when you're like, it's not working for me. I didn't get anything from that social media stuff. We're like, well, you didn't listen. You didn't listen. Okay. But I'm going to start with a uh, profile of home buyers and home sellers uh, just released. One second as I pull this up. NAR profile of home buyers and home sellers. No need to know. Ask me where, where I got it from because I'm going to give you a way for you to download it for free because this is how we do it. It's Friday morning and I feel all right. Party's here on the west side. Okay, so let me come in here one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a URL in the comments for you and that URL you can click. It's gonna take you through to my messenger bot, of course, and then you'll be able to have the have the profile for free, okay? As an NAR member, you can get it for free as well, but let me just start with that. I'm gonna change my, share my screen with you. Boo boo, there we go. We going, let's do it. Oh, there we are. Okay, that's what a, that's what a messenger bot flow looks like, but let me come back over here. Let's see what we wanna do. We're gonna do this first. 40th anniversary of the top 10 highlights. We're gonna give you the top 10 highlights of the profile of home buyers and sellers. This thing is, 163 pages, um, it, it would behoove you, one of my favorite words lately, to really go through and just study this because if you don't, this is all about your business, right? Oh, Sherry. Sherry's late, but she arrived. Welcome, Sherry Gotzi. Gotzi! I like that. Um, but let me, <laughs> I'm so easily distracted. So here's... We're going to start with the top 10 things. I feel like this is David Letterman, right? Number one, tenure in home dropped to the lowest level in 11 years as the pandemic motivated sellers to move and sellers trans, uh, translated home gains into home, home price gains into home gains in home equity. I can't speak. I need more coffee, right? So look at it. It's down to eight years. Back in, back in 1987, it used to be six, but it's down to eight. And I think this can vary based on your generation. Uh, I know that if millennials and even the Z Gen coming behind them, they don't see houses necessarily as home. It's a thing that they can build wealth with. A lot of them that I work with, and it's like, what? I can sell? I know I just got here three years ago. It's just the way that I like it. Let's do this, right? And they're ready to to upgrade. And and let's face it, uh, us millennials, we are impatient. We don't want to wait till things are ready to do be done, uh, like previous generations. And we're not going to stay there for thirty years and pay off the mortgage either. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's more important than ever to stay in touch with your clients that you have sold real estate to in the past, because if you don't, somebody else will, right? DJ Airhorn. <laughs> That's right. Hit him with the air horn. I know that uh, Jeffrey really likes that, so I, I try to play that as much as I can. Number two, proximity to friends and family is the number one motivator for repeat buyers and sellers to move with a, uh, with a close second being the need for space, right? This is their motivation to move, folks. You always think like, oh, it's the American dream. You need more space. You need more whatever it is. Need more space is number two. But number one is to be closer to family. And, and I think the pandemic had a lot to do with this, right? As we realized, you know, during during COVID, I'm my my father's my mother and father only eight minutes away, and, and so that was nice. But even when my father uh, he got COVID, right, and and we couldn't visit him at home, we had to actually visit him through the window. Last Thanksgiving, we was was done through the the window of his ranch style home. Uh, but it was nice that he was nearby. So that's number one. Number two, I think the need for more space also, right? That was motivated by the pandemic because it's like, man, this tiny house was good when I was working 60 hours a week outside the house. Now that I'm here all the time for months and years, uh, it's too small. 
if, if you have had an attempt to call a home improvement company anytime lately, they are freaking so busy. Yeah. Yeah. Michael J says people wanting to be closer to aging family. Absolutely. Um, but, but it's also not just aging family. If you're a working, working family, like, right. My wife and I are realtors. We have two kids being close to the, to the grandparents is always good because that's our childcare, right? <laughs> Let's be honest, being close to them and, and being able to drop the kids off when we have, I mean, we, we do work a lot by Google calendar, but if you, uh, we have conflicts and it's good to, to be able to drop them off. But yeah, so house is too small and I can tell you, make some phone calls to your local home improvement folks. It took us 45 days to get somebody to come give us an estimate for a kitchen. And then it took another 30 days or so before that estimate was ready. And then we went into uh, their, their showroom, right? And did a, uh, and, and man, really was a great presentation. I can appreciate good salespeople. But a kitchen that five years ago would have cost $25,000 retail, not even like wholesale for me to get everything and do it myself would have been like 10 was $50,000. Okay, I'm not talking about blowing out any walls. I'm not talking about anything extravagant. We have a average size kitchen, 12 by 12, let's call it. You know, our selections weren't crazy. Fifty thousand dollars. So if if I find if I call a home improvement person and I say, forget about the addition, because originally we were going to bump out this back wall four feet, and if that could have been done for fifty thousand, that would have been a different story. But now we're talking seventy five thousand. Hmm. Well, for a seventy five thousand dollar renovation. What am I going to do? I'm in real estate. I'll probably buy another house. Okay. But I love my neighborhood. I'm going to stay where I'm at uh, and figure out something with, with the kitchen, with the kitchen. 11%, uh, right? Let's look at, go down the list here. 11% neighborhood became less desirable. 9% home too large, which is the minority, I guess. 9% change in family situation, right? Kind of like what Michael J said, uh, moving due to retirement and then job relocation. Um, or being able to relocate with their work. We did see a lot of that where people realize, hey, our company is going to be more uh, remote. Why do I have to live closer to the city where, you know, the, the bigger metro area where a lot of you who are on, you live near a big metro area. And, you know, you go 50 miles outside of that, 30 miles outside of that sometimes even. And the property values are half, right? Cost of living, half. And, and if you only need to go to the office once in a while, it just makes sense to make that move and you might even have more uh, inventory available. Number three, homes are selling at a median of one week on the market with fewer offering incentives. Look at this, look at this chart here, folks. Okay, um, I wish they had the date here, but I would say that 11 weeks was probably 2008 uh, or so. But 11 weeks on market, one week. And I would say that that would be days it wouldn't be as much as seven days uh, if I know that many of our markets are doing delayed negotiations, meaning they list a property and then they take all offers within four or five, whatever uh, amount of days. I think it would be hours on market in a lot of, in a lot of our areas. So one week. Uh, and all these statistics are important when you're talking to your clients and, and building realistic expectations. Because we know if a property is on, a, on the market for one week, Right? What do the buyers go? What's wrong with that house? Why is it still for sale? And you're like, uh, it's been one week. They're like, yeah, exactly. Okay. So being able to exp uh, explain that. Uh, number four, the typical seller received the asking price for the home. Eh, 100%. I think that's on the low side. Our market is 104% list price to sale price ratio. Uh, again, building realistic expectations because this cannot last forever. Now, the conversation I always have is like, hey, in a perfect world with market conditions being good and the sun is shining just right and music is, my favorite song is playing on the radio, you know, maybe perhaps we'll get multiple offers and we'll sell for full price, okay? In, in a miracle world where we're going to run into the streets and throw confetti and be super happy, we may get multiple offers and it may go for over asking. Okay, you have to change the expectations because you don't want them to go, oh, it's only 5,000 over asking. What's wrong with our house? I heard about the guy down the street that got 50, right? So you have to explain what's the average, if it's 100%, you know, really dial this in 
to your market, make it very specific. If you're not familiar with RPR, RPR is a great way to do that. NARRPR.com. You can sign up for free. Number five, all cash buyers are consistently higher than past years. Yo, if you don't know this, you are not in real estate right now. That's what I want to say. Okay. Let me fix my camera. Move this thing. There we go. Things, little things bother me sometimes. Okay. All cash buyers are consistently higher than past years. Look at this. So it's 96% first time home buyers and then 83% of repeat buyers. So 4% of first time home buyers are cash. And then 17%, if you read that statistic correctly, 17% of repeat buyers paid all cash for their home. And I know a lot of folks that, look, they didn't have the cash. They just realized it was so competitive. They went to, you know, somebody who's got the money, hard money lender, whoever, like, hey, let's, can you loan me the money? And then they do a cash out refi uh, after it closes. Okay. All right. I know we got four more. Let's see. Number six, the first time homebuyer share jumped to the highest level since 2017. That means there's more first time homebuyers in the market. Uh, if you work with first time homebuyers, look at, I would, my marketing message would be like, hurry up, get off the fence because as, as the, our, our market still appreciates, the median sale prices increase and interest rates for mortgages increase, you're going to get less house for more money. Okay. So if you don't like what you're seeing right now, if you're just casually looking if for in two, for a $200,000 home in Rochester, New York, that's going to change dramatically next year for what your mortgage might be and what you might be comfortable with. So let's buy now. Number seven, there was a rise in single women buyers and decline in married couple buyers. One moment, need coffee. Ah, coffee is life, right? Uh, household composition. So we have 60% married couple. That's down. What does it say? Growth in single female home buyers from a recent low of 15% in 2015 to 19% uh, in this year's report. Unmarried couples and single men remain steady at 9% each. Among first time home buyers, only 50% are married, 20% are single women, 17% are unmarried couples, and 11% are single men. Single men out there, I want you to read that statistic, okay? Single women are buying homes twice as much as single men. So I think the single guys are wasting their money, chasing after the single ladies. The single ladies are being smart and buying homes. So changing, you got to figure out who your target market is. If you're looking at first-time home buyers and your marketing is tar targeting single men, they're only representing 11% of the market, right? That's how you really dial into these statistics. Uh, if you're looking at married couples, hey, 50% of first-time home buyers are married couples. So figure out what you want to do. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just giving you an idea to <laughs> Tiffany says step it up, boys. Right? Tell them. Tell them. Um, number eight, buyers with children under the age of 18 continue to decline. Buyer had children under 18 in the home. Look at that. That's like. I'm going to do this one. Oh, okay. I'm like, why does this matter? <laughs> so here's why it matters. And, and once you, again, if, if you're just tuning in a little bit late, if you click the link that's somewhere in the comments there, it starts with m m dot me. Uh, that will give get you to the messenger bot. The messenger bot will give you the 163 page report for free. Okay. Uh, yeah. So why does that matter? It's because under the age of 18, if you have children, schools is something that matters to you when you're purchasing a home. Okay. I'm not going to comment on good schools, bad schools, whatever that is. Schools is something that would be important to that client. Uh, and that only represents 31% of the market. Let me change my system audio. You guys can hear that. Okay, good. Number nine, when buyers do purchase, they do so with the help and expertise of an agent. Holler at your boy. Let's give them a round of applause.
87% used an agent. This is the buyer used an agent when buying a home. 7% uh, used the builder's agent. Wah, wah. We don't like them. Uh, I mean, we like builders. Don't get me wrong, but I think having a, an exclusive buyer's agent is most important in a new construction transaction. And then just 4% purchased from the previous owner. That's right. They bought a FISBO or something like that. So only 4% of the people are cheating on you in that. Well, let's say this. 11% are cheating on you in that way because you could be working with them. You could be out showing them houses and then they walk through uh, a builder's model and the, and then the agent says, Hey, all right, let's go. Uh, let's get your lot reservation taken care of. And we'll get you into your new home. Look at he split. It's going to be 12 months, right? Nine to 12 months on average, depending on where you are in the country uh, and with no definitive timeline. So I hope you have a tent for them in the backyard. that they can say, let's be real. So make sure you get them exclusive right to represent. Nail it down. Number 10. Wait, should we hit the drum roll? Okay, number 10. Sellers want the expertise of an agent to sell their home. It's on the up. Okay, 89% of sellers use an agent. With this crazy, insane market, this says that, hey, People are calling us. They're still using our services because they realize the value that we bring to the transaction. So when you're having that discussion with somebody going, well, why can't I sell it myself? Well, 90% of all the sellers throughout the land used an agent because they realize our knowledge and expertise is what gets you the most money possible. And on average, this, the statistic is uh, for sale by owners get 16% less when they sell the home. So there really is no savings. In fact, you want to maximize your profit and not leave any money on the table, call a realtor today. Okay, you got me. Thank you, Jessica Louts. She is the Vice President of Demographics and Behavioral Insights at the National Association of Realtors. Look at guys, I'm getting all this info from NAR. It's there for you. You go to nar.realtor slash blogs. Here, I'm gonna, let me see. That's a long URL. I'll put it in the comments later. All right, second thing I'm gonna do for you is recap what happened last week. And of course, please, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please put them in the comment section. And our board of directors approves sweeping MLS changes. Do, 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 do. All right, aiming for greater transparency, the National Association of Realtors Voted to adopt six policy recommendations from the MLS Issues and Policies Committee. Here they are. <laughs> MLSs must now include the amount of compensation the listing broker is offering buyer's agents on each active listing displayed on consumer-facing websites and in MLS data feeds. Yeah. So those of you who may be advertising or marketing that you as a buyer's agent, it doesn't cost you a thing. You're going to have to change that immediately. Okay. So think about that. Uh, in, in markets where it's super competitive and I'm, I'm going to say that all commission is negotiable. There's no standard rate in the United States or in the world or in the universe. Do you guys agree? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to use apples. I'm not going to use a percentage anyways. Let's say I took a listing for six apples and then let's say I took a, for a listing for four apples and uh, I am going to keep three because of all my marketing efforts and everything that I do to get the home sold for the most amount of money. I then offer out one apple. Number one, you know that it's a violation of the code of ethics to not show a property based on compensation. Now the buyer will see, right, if, you, if you're a good buyer's agent and you have that discussion with them. When you sit down and do a buyer presentation, exclusive buyer presentation, they're going to go, oh, they're only offering 1%. What about the other two? Well, Mr. Buyer, we have an agreement, right? You're going to need to figure out with that exclusive right to represent how that compensation is going to happen. There's a number of ways that it can be done, but at least... Those of you who were scared to have, I was never scared of the, the, the conversation. Like, how do you get paid? 
Typically, that may happen at, oh, three apples, sorry. Uh, typically, that may happen at closing from the listing side. However, if the compensation doesn't match, we're going to have a conversation. Oh, okay. And when you say, well, the seller's always paid the commission, that's not, it all depends on how you look at it. The seller paid the real estate commission with the money received from the buyer. That's that's where all, all this kind of came from. All right. Uh, we also have, the changes also require MLSs to offer their participants a single data feed and a brokerage back office data feed. Uh, participants' IDX displays must identify the listing firm. This is a good one too. Uh, this is all about transparency and you know helping the consumer. I know some of you are going, oh my gosh, I'm going to get less leads. Well, you shouldn't have got that lead in the first place because they were looking for the listing agent for specific questions about the listing. Uh, participants, IDX must identify the listing firm and an email or phone number provided by the listing participant. Email or phone number, right? Must identify the listing firm, which that was there, that's been there for a while. But then also an email or phone number, doesn't have to be both, provided by the listing participant. Sweet, huh? Changes prevent MLS participants from displaying that their broker services to a buyer, client, or customer are free. I just kind of said that a minute ago. Unless the participant will receive no financial uh, compensation from any source for those services. I've seen these mailers. I've seen the flyers. I've seen the email. Like, use a buyer's agent. It won't cost you a thing. If you're using that, you have to stop immediately. Okay? Just change your verbiage. Um, you know, because... Look at saying that you're free really doesn't add value, does it? Right. I would rather say, look at I'm I'm gonna get you the best possible price in the home and find you the right home, the right home, because that's the number one reason, um, year after year, why people use an agent when purchasing a home is to help find the right home. So changing your marketing message will help. What else do we have here? MLS participants also are not allowed to filter out or restrict listings that are searchable by consumers based on the level of compensation offered. Boom, baby. Boom. Let me hit this. What am I going to do here? Surprise. Another surprise. It hits you with another surprise. Get with that set. Not that I've ever done this, but there are people you can filter the results and say, okay, I'm looking for a $500,000 home in Queens. There's other criteria that you can filter further, right? Four bedrooms, two and a half baths, square footage. Listing compens or uh, buyer agent compensation is another way that MLS results can be filtered when they set up those auto searches through the MLS gateway or however they're doing that. So that cannot be done if you're doing that. That's a no-no. All right. What else do we have here? Yeah, this comes after almost two years of debate. Two years of debate and, you know, Google the Justice Department and NAR lawsuits because uh, that's that's a whole other thing where some of this is coming from. It's all about protecting the consumer and, and buyer's agency and how it's almost like uh, a tie-in for the buyer agent to get paid when it's a choice. It's a choice, right? All right, so what questions do we have about this is I'm going to come back over here. Boom, 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 boom. Do -do. Have any questions? Do we have any questions? So, again, if you do that or here, I'll even give you a QR code. Uh, let's see where the QR code is that I did. I think it's this one. Nope, it's this one. There we go. I'm hiding behind the QR code. So if you scan this right here, that's going to get you the NAR profile of home buyers and home sellers. Okay. Uh, next week, we're going to be talking about how to get listings. Ah. Sweet Caroline. We're going to be talking about how to get listings uh, using predictive analytics. We're going to have our folks from Revaluate on with us again, probably. Um, but there's nothing you should be doing more of than prospecting for sellers, in my opinion. Uh, finding ways. So next week is going to be all the different ways we can use data to get listings and prospect smarter, not harder. Uh, you know me, I like... I like to door knock, but I also like to door knock smartly. Is that a word? Smartly? I think it is. Uh, 
based on the data rather than door knocking an entire neighborhood. Yes, we're going to have much to say about nothing next week too. Probably Tuesday, Jeff, if that works for you. Uh, Tuesday at 1230, uh, we'll have another episode of Much to Say About Nothing, which is a great podcast that we host with Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton from Douglas Hellman. But next week is going to be using data to get listings. And I think maybe I can finish off here. Um, oh, here. Are there only required to show compensation to buyers, agents, or compensation to all cooperating agents? So uh, depending on your MLS, that should be broken up into sub-agents and buyers, agents, and broker agents. That's how ours uh, is broken up. But I'm going to... So I don't misquote anything. I'm going to put the entire link, which is going to be super long, and I would normally bitly it, but I don't have time for that right now. Okay. There it is. It's in the comments, so you can review that. Uh, I'm sure that your offices, office managers, your brokers, they're all going to be uh, updating you this with this because things are moving quickly. I know even like the WCR uh, – chapters or networks, I'm sorry, they're called networks now, are changing their bylaws because they require that the new people start immediately after the NAR meetings. So they have, you know, like a president, you know, some people do it on the calendar year, uh, but they want to do it immediately after the NAR meetings. So scan that. Pew, pew, pew. And then, wait, we got one more. But wait, there's more. What do we want to give you next? The bot gallery, for those of you, I know... Um, yeah, that one works. Uh, Michael J., I think you were in my, my Messenger Bot marketing class. Uh, we're going to probably do a whole workshop in regards to Messenger Bots. Probably be like a five-day, one-hour-a-day workshop. We're just kind of working out the logistics and timing of that. But if you scan that, you're going get, to get to our bot gallery. Uh, this is one of the greatest tools that we use in speaking as well as real estate to provide on-demand um, resources, right? Rather than me, as I'm talking to you about the NAR profile of home buyers and home sellers, rather than me saying, hey guys, send me an email and I'll reply back with it. No, you don't wanna wait. Nobody wants to wait these days. They want it right now, right? So all you gotta do is click the thing or scan the QR code or send a keyword. If you send the keyword profile uh, to our page, that would also reply back. And, and I set these all up ahead of time. Right before I went live, um, I set this up in the messenger bot. Here, I'll show you this real quick. Really quickly. That's where we were there. Ba-boom, coming back over here. Here's what the messenger bot, this is just a basic messenger bot flow behind the scenes. So you can see, as you look at this, these are all the ways that this profile, and it was 2020 profile because I did this last year, but it's 2021 now. Um, but QR code, Facebook comments, and, and this doesn't always work. So that's why I don't say if you commented profile in the comments of this live stream, it should trigger, but it doesn't always. So I don't always rely on that. The URL, that's the messenger URL, the Facebook keyword. Again, if you send us the keyword profile, that will work. And then you could even send us the, um, a text message saying profile. Let me see what that says. Yeah, if message is profile, um, we're, you don't have our, our cell phone number. It's not our cell phone number. The messenger bot has its own specific phone number, which you have to send the message to. So if I was in a classroom setting and I knew you couldn't click or scan pretty easily, then I would also give you the number to text as well. But dude, this is the bee's knees, right? I'll show you one last thing, and then I'm going to let you go. Come back over here. Home equity, where is it at? Home equity. Home equity. Here it is. Okay, so these are all of the questions. When somebody wants to get an, a home equity estimate, I'm going to zoom this a little bit. Okay, this is how the flow is programmed. Have you ever had a home equity estimate? And then just, I'm just predicting the conversation. It's asking all of the questions that I would normally ask if somebody was telling me that they wanted to sell their home. And then at the end of it, right, look at this. What is the property address? How much do you owe on your mortgage? What are the credit lines? Liens to pay off the property. Please list all the improvements. 
and then it ends with thanks for the deets. We will compile a report and we'll send it to you within 24 hours. Again, in there, it's like, you don't have to talk to me because they don't want to talk to you. They want to get the information. So if you don't know about the bots, the bee's knees. Yes, I did say the bee's knees. <laughs> the bee's knees. Bees don't really have knees, so I don't even know where that came from. Right? Or maybe they do. I don't know. I have to go watch Bee's Life again. <laughs> All right. Any questions uh, as I... If now we're going to get out of here because we got another meeting at 10. Uh, we're going to be live again with uh, Eleni Summer Shield from Wise Agent. That's going to be at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You should be able to see it here on our channel, but it'll also be on the Wise Agent. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to use Reels, Instagram Reels, uh, to build credibility, exposure, popularity, and eventually listings. So that's at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Same great channel if you want to tune back in. Uh, if not, you can catch the replay. But it's Jeremiah's J Man Monero with J Man Speaks. I appreciate all of y'all coming out. Ah, hit him with the beat now. Oh, I got a green screen over here. You guys didn't know. Watch this.